A few months ago, I was laid off from my job due to a certain worldwide pandemic. For most people, this would be a pretty unfortunate development, and of course, it was for me too. I was just starting a career as a mechanical engineer, and I was working my dream job at a certain theme park that you may be familiar with. However, when all this happened, I couldn't help but be a little excited. I've always had a passion for making things, and this really gave me the opportunity to spend the time making everything that I've been wanting to, which is a lot. A lot of what I wanted to make involved the use of a 3D printer, a laser cutter, or a CNC router. And buying all of these, especially at the scale that I wanted, would have been super expensive. So I thought, why not just make them? I had already designed and made my own 3D printer before all this happened, and even attached a small laser to it. But I wasn't satisfied with the scale, the quality, or the power of it. But in doing this, I realized that the three machines I needed are essentially the same thing just with different tools attached. They all have three motor-controlled axes that move a tool in Cartesian space relative to a workpiece. So really, having three independent machines like this is just a waste of money and space. Now, I'm definitely not the first person to have this idea. In fact, this already exists on the market. But the only products I could find are just too small to be of much use to me and don't seem to do any of these three tasks particularly well. So anyways, this is my solution, the Modumaker. It features three easily interchangeable tool heads, an E3D Hamera Direct Drive 3D Printing Extruder, a 60 watt CO2 laser cutter, and a 500 watt spindle motor. The build platform for each can be quickly changed out accordingly on the motor controlled Z-axis bed. The X and Y gantries are constructed entirely of aluminum as to minimize deflection from the router's cutting forces and to maximize the precision of the setup. The maximum build area of this machine is 2.5 by 4 feet, so really there's not a whole lot that this thing can't make. Over the next couple of weeks I'll be releasing an in-depth build series where I show you how I designed and built it. If you're interested, go ahead and subscribe so you can hopefully see this thing actually working soon. And if you're interested in actually making one of these, I'll eventually be releasing plans for it, with mechanical drawings, CAD files, parts lists, and everything you need to make your own. So to start off this project, I'm building this cabinet, which is going to act as the foundation for the machine. I'm not going to go into detail on how I made this because it's kind of arbitrary. You can use whatever you want as a base as long as it's big enough and sturdy enough, but mine does have a few cool features that'll help with housing the electronics and some of the other infrastructure for the machine. What we are going to talk about today is the frame of the machine. This is what holds up the rails that the wide gantry will eventually ride on and what holds the lead screws and the motors that'll drive the bed up and down. I'll also go ahead and build and attach the bed to the frame. The frame is made mostly just out of this T-slotted aluminum extrusion. This stuff is super easy to assemble and provides a good amount of strength. I'm using a 20mm wide variety and various heights depending on the needed strength of its application. Here I'm just cutting it all down to its final lengths. You can do this with a miter saw, or you can just order it already cut to the lengths you need. It's just a little more expensive that way. To connect everything, I'm using these cheap corner brackets. And then anywhere I'm fastening something to the T-slots, I'm using various M5 bolts and these T-nuts. I like these kinds of nuts because they can just drop into the slots, so you don't have to slide everything in from the ends. So something I did to save money, which I immediately regretted, was using some leftover 1 inch by 1 inch extrusion that I had lying around for the vertical supports. It mostly worked for the outer supports, but for these inner supports, the brackets were giving me issues because of their orientation. They also required different fasteners, and it just made everything a little more annoying. Other than that, putting this together was pretty simple, and it turned out to be decently rigid. I still might come back in the future and add some more supports to it, but for now it'll do just fine. The bed is also made up of aluminum extrusion, so this went together in basically the exact same way. I am also going through with a speed square to make sure that everything's at a perfect 90 degrees before I tighten it down. In order to fasten the T-nuts for the lead screws to the actual bed, I'm planning on using these aluminum extrusion 90 degree brackets. But first I need to make a few alterations to them. So after drilling out the main hole, I then inserted the T-nuts and marked and drilled. 
and tap the holes so I can fasten them together with some M3 bolts. I then attach the bearings to the frame and slid the lead screws into place. I bolted the brackets to the bed, threaded the T-nuts on, and then bolted them all together. And finally I inserted the belt pulleys onto the lead screws. For the Z-axis motor assemblies, I'm using these NEMA 17 stepper motors. These will be attached to the frame by these steel motor mounts, and I just had to drill out these slots a bit to make room for the M5 bolts, which will attach them to the frame. The motor is secured with four M3 bolts, and for the front two mounting holes, I added these idler pulleys to guide the belt around the motor pulley. As I started trying to align everything and tension the belt, I realized that there's a flaw in the design that I couldn't really ignore. You'll notice here that I had to completely detach the bed just to move the lead screw assembly into its final position. This is already not a great way of belt tensioning, but what makes this almost impossible is the fact that you can't reach the T-nut bracket bolt once the lead screw is installed. I knew this going into it, and I thought that as long as you had the order of assembly correct, it wouldn't really be a big deal. But this is just bad design for manual assembly, and actually assembling it made me realize that this isn't really acceptable. Another issue is that there was some noticeable backlash in the bed, and even worse, it started to bind up depending on the alignment. I was using these old lead screws that had a pretty large thread lead, which means that one rotation would lead to a larger translation of the bed compared to what most lead screws would do. This essentially trades off force in favor of speed, and for my purposes, with such a large bed and the introduction of cutting forces, I really need to prioritize force and with more force output, the motor is less likely to skip steps and the lead screws won't bind as easily. I got these replacements which have a 2mm lead instead of an 8mm lead from the old ones. They also come with these anti-backlash T-nuts which conveniently have mounting holes on the sides. This will translate to a much higher force and we can actually calculate the theoretical maximum force of the bed using the motor curve, the gear ratio of the pulleys, and this one equation. I won't bore you with all the math, but essentially this works out to a theoretical lifting force of 314 pounds. I say theoretical because there's a lot of assumptions in this calculation, and just because the motors can handle this doesn't mean that the bed won't break under this load. Still this should give us plenty of lifting force on the bed, which is important for the CNC's functionality because while most CNC's work by lowering the spindle towards the bed, this machine will be raising the bed up towards the spindle. Installing these lead screws was much easier, and after everything was aligned and leveled, it felt much better. And I think we're going to go ahead and end the video here, and the next video we'll be getting into the X and Y gantries and hopefully get some things moving around. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.